Okay, so today I've got for you a new Amstrad emulation tutorial. So I covered Amstrad around about a month ago, month and a half ago, and that was using Caprice 32. There is another emulator which some people find better, or others might find Caprice better in certain ways. Uh, but they both run games just fine. So let me show you through this one anyway. This is WinApe. So WinApe has been around for a very, very long time and it's still getting developments to this day. So it's still kind of recent, but most developments, most bugs on this emulator are covered at this point. So from what I tested, it runs pretty much everything I've thrown at it. So let's just download this emulator. If we go to the link in my description, which is for the winape.net website, we're just gonna go to the download section under menu. And the latest version of this is January 2016. So what I meant just a minute ago was it gets frequent updates. If we look through the history of this, it's had a ton of updates in the past, especially around 2006. Uh, so I guess they actually reached a point where there's very little else uh, devs can do to make this even better than what it already is. We've also got a ROM file included in this, in fact several ROM files, but so if we just download this one, this is version 2.0b2, just download that and let's minimize that window and let's just see what's inside of this zip folder I've just downloaded. So it's got several different contents in there and some folders, so as usual I'm going to right click on my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to just call this folder Amstrad and I'm going to just highlight all these contents inside of this zipped file and just drag them into that Amstrad folder I've just created. So let's open up this Amstrad folder I've just created and what I was saying just now is that this setup actually comes with ROMs inside so ROMs are actually operating systems as it were so as you can see there's a ton in here and this is supporting the 6128 Amstrad uh, the 664 Amstrad and obviously the most popular especially in Britain is the 464 so let's back out of this and let's open up WinApe itself so double left click on the XE and in some cases you might find yourself you might have to wait for it for a few minutes or a few seconds uh, to download a plugin but just let that run and eventually you'll get through to the user interface which I'm on right now. So to load games with this we're of course going to want to load some games and as somebody who's always encouraging and supporting new releases for older platforms I'm going to show you a website which is one of my favourites, this is itch.io and I'll leave the link in my description again for this and if you just type into itch.io, just Amstrad, you're going to get a range of brand new games coming out for this uh, some of them you might have to pay for but most of them here are free so I'm going to go for this Paletto Jones 2 Amstrad game just here and you're also going to find if you're English that a lot of Amstrad games are actually Spanish but a lot of them also come with translations of English. So let's just download this new game. So download now. Uh, and of course I always encourage you to support developers so you've got uh, two euros there but that's entirely optional. Uh, for this I'm going to just go no thanks just take me to downloads. And the one I'm going to download is .dsk, so obviously that's a disk format image. And most of these emulators, especially for Amstrad, are going to be using either .taps or .dsks. Uh, DSKs, obviously they're quicker, and I think a lot of games on Amstrad were actually on disk, apart from Britain that is. But of course nowadays most of them are put onto disk because they're quicker. So let's just download the .dsk. And you're going to notice a bracket saying one, that's simply because I've downloaded this one uh, just a minute ago prior to recording this setup guide. So just drag that onto your desktop and as always I like to have a clean work environment. So what I'm going to do is drag this around, I'm going to open this Amstrad folder back up and I'm going to create a new folder in here just to put my games in and I'm going to call this one Games. This is entirely optional, if you want to do this, that's up to you, but I just like a bit of neatness. Whoa, not that neat, okay. So I'm going to drag this game of P. Jones into my games folder I've just created. Just close this one down. And so to load this game, all we're going to do for this is file, 
If we go to uh, drive A and insert disk image, like I said, .dsks are disk images. And from here, we're going to find the Amstrad folder, which is right on my desktop. So there we go. And obviously I've just created a games folder and there's our game. So just double left click on this one. Now this game is now loaded into the Amstrad system into Parados. So to actually load it, and I think this is where a lot of people get stuck with Amstrad games, is you need to type some commands for this for it to work. So we're going to type in CAT cat, and this is now going to list the contents of that .dsk. And here's your contents. So inside of this one, we got a couple of files, but the one we need to load up is pjones, which is .bin. So to do this, all you're going to do is type in run and then quotation mark and then the actual name of the file, which is pjones, as you can see. So pjones and then quotation mark to close it and I'm pressing enter on my keyboard. And you're also going to get that sound of the disk drive being emulated. So from here, I've got my PlayStation 3 controller plugged in as always. And I'm going to select joystick, which is number two. And there we go. So I've not even configured my controller for this. If you do get controller problems, then you need to look at your drivers for your controller. Uh, but this emulator works straight out of the box with a controller already plugged in. This works fine. Okay, and at any point you want to pause your gameplay, all you're going to do is just go down to the pause button and that's going to open up a little debugger so you can see the code involved in this particular game by the seems of it, which by the looks of it is assembly language. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is obviously give you a full screen. Uh, some people might be just happy to have it running in the window. Personally, I prefer a full screen and this is very simple to do. If we go to settings, and we go to display, you've got a range of different options here. And we can change, firstly, before we get to the full screen, from here, you can change it to the traditional monochrome screen. And in Britain at the time, a monochrome screen pretty much came with the 464. Whereas the posh kids, like the other color monitor, most kids, from what I remember of kids having, had the green screen. And you've also got black and white, so that's entirely up to you what you choose for this. So other parts here to consider looking at is different window sizes. So like I just said, some people might be interested in just playing games on a window, uh, others might not. But if you toggle around with these settings just here, it will actually give us real time as this is going to look when you boot up the emulator WinApe again. So I'm going to leave it be for now. And when we actually go into the full screen at the moment, you can also toggle half size and normal. So let me just show you how to get into full screen itself. And as you can see, that's now got us in the full screen mode. So to exit full screen mode, all we're gonna do is press F10 again. And that's brought us back to the window mode, which is a bit easier to see what we're doing now. So let me show you something else which WinApe can do. So let's start this game again by pressing two. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly load in save states on this emulator. So I'm going to play this game and I'm going to just go to the next screen. And this is always a test I do. If we just go to file here and we go to save snapshot, we can save where we are right now to pick up this from another time. So if we just press OK and I'm going to give this a name and I'm going to just call this Jones. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to play the game a little bit further. Okay, let's load up where we just saved from. So, automatically detects your save file, which you've just created, which is a .sna. Let's open that. And there we go, we're back to the original place where we saved from. Ok, 
Okay, and lastly, I'm going to just quickly guide you through how to load up a cassette tape image. So some of these are going to be in .tap format. Uh, the one I've got here, Cybernoid 2, is in .cdt. So it's still a tape file, so let me show you how to load this up. So we need to go to file for this. And if we just go down to tape, first of all, I'm going to just go to this show tape control. And from here, you can open up this image. So if we just press open, and mine's already done, but I'm going to show you this. And from here, we just look for that tape image of Cybernoid. Just double left click on that. So this tape is now inserted into the virtual tape machine, but you need to type in some commands for this. And all you need to do to load these then is if we type this in and followed by tape and then press enter and then run and then quotation mark and then press enter again on your keyboard. So let's just press play now on this virtual tape machine and press any key. And there we go, it loads just like it would a real cassette tape. How cool is that? So of course, tape images are gonna take a long time and they're also gonna give you this spectrum sound and data noise. So there we go, I'm gonna leave it just there because as you know, some of these Amstrad cassette tape games take a very long time. But as you can see, just as I stopped it just there, you can see the loading image come up already for this. So that's about it for the WinApe Amstrad setup tutorial for 2023 by your friends, just Jamie. Um, it's a great emulator. Loading these cassette tapes into a virtual cassette machine, it's got to be the best next thing to a real CPC. It's also taught me that there's a lot of games coming out for the Amstrad CPC. So let's check those out. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting. You might have learned something, especially with those commands we need to type in for loading disk images or how to load tape images. So until next time, stay retro.